Hey guys, we are the Study Buddies. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video of Biology Edition, we will be learning about a new subtopic called Cellular Level of Organization. We all must have at some point read a storybook or any book before. The stories or content inside the book are made up what we call sentences. And each sentences are made up of words. What makes the words are called letters. So why am I telling you guys about this breakdown of a story into letters? Just like this analogy, every single thing on this world is made up of something smaller than it which is called basic units. So for this chapter, we are going to dive into a really important part of all living things called cells. Every single organism, whether they are humans, animals, plants or the tiniest microorganism that can't be seen with the naked eyes are made up of cells. Cells are the basic units of life. Cells are also the smallest structure capable of performing all of the functions necessary for life. Any biochemical process you name, whether it is respiration, digestion or excretion, everything is done by various cells scattered throughout our body. An organism can consist of only one cell or millions and millions of cells too. An organism with only one cell is called an unicellular organism, for example, bacteria and protozoa. Unicellular organisms are typically small and cannot be seen by the naked eyes. While an organism with more than one or millions of these cells are called multicellular organisms such as us humans, animals, plants and many more. Multicellular organisms are typically large in size and easily seen. Even though now we know so much about cells and their functions, back in the days, scientists were still clueless of what all of us were made of. However, with the great work of scientists named, sorry if I butchered their names, Matthias Jacob Schilden, a German botanist, Theodor Schwann, a German physician, and Rudolf Burkow, a German physician, and many other infamous discoverers, a theory called cell theory was created. Huh? A theory for cell? Weird, isn't it? Not that much actually. This theory led to countless findings on origins of life on Earth itself. So, what cell theory postulates actually? There are three tenets in this theory. Firstly, it states that all organisms are composed of cells. Like I mentioned earlier, whether it is a large organism such as humans, animals and plants or a microorganism such as bacteria and protozoa, all of them are made up of cells. But it doesn't necessarily be the exact same cell. For example, in humans, we have several types of these cells namely nerve cell, muscle cell, epithelial cell and many more. Secondly, cell theory states that cells are the basic units of structure and function in organisms. In cells, we have various organelles each performing specific functions which allow cells to carry out life-sustaining processes. We will learn more about the specific organelles in the cells that lead to their contribution to the structure and function in organisms in our future videos. The third tenet in cell theory states that cells come only from pre-existing cells because cells are self-reproducing. This means we can infer that all life on earth today came from cells in ancient times. In reality, a continuity of cells has been present from generation to generation. Now, let me summarize the three tenets in the cell theory. Firstly, all organisms are composed of cells. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in organisms. And lastly, cells come only from pre-existing cells because cells are self-reproducing. Moving on, in case you didn't know, all cells are not the same size. Cells range in different sizes, but all of them are generally quite small. Take a frog's egg and sperm cell as an example. A frog's egg is about 1mm in diameter 
and large enough to be seen by the human eye. While a sperm cell is as small as 1 micrometer which is definitely very 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 small indeed. Because of their size, these small biological structures can only be viewed through microscopes, either a light or electron microscope. But do you know the reason why cells need to be significantly small? Cells need a surface area large enough to allow adequate nutrients to enter and ways to be eliminated respectively. These substances need to be transported from one cell to the adjacent cells. Let's take a look at these bigger size cells, namely cell 1, cell 2 and cell 3. The surface area for these cells will be large as well. Substances need to enter one cell at one point and travel through the other cells and then be eliminated at another cell. The darker line shows the diameter of these cells together. The substances would take much longer time to travel from one cell to another. This reduces the efficiency of the whole process. But as for smaller cells, the surface area is much smaller and the substances are transported at much quicker pace with higher efficiency. Look how with the same diameter from just now, the number of cells travelled has increased. This relationship is called the surface area to volume ratio. Let me give you another mental image that might help you to visualize the importance of surface area to volume ratio and why this relationship favors smaller cells. Imagine a small room and a large room filled with people. The small room holds only 20 people while the large room holds 80 people in it. The smaller room has only two doors to exit while the bigger room has four doors. So, my question is, if there is a fire occurred in both rooms, the people in which room could get out faster? The answer is the smaller room. It would be faster to get out the people of the smaller room because it has more favourable ratio of doors to people. Therefore, in general, a smaller cell has higher surface area to volume ratio. This increases the efficiency of the cell conducting biochemical processes. But larger cells have lower surface area to volume ratio, thus has lower efficiency. Our body needs highly efficient cells to conduct biochemical reactions quickly. And with that being said, this will be the end of this video about cellular level of organization. Thank you everyone for watching this video and I really hope you learned something new today. If you like this content and want more of it, do like this video, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon as well. If you have any doubts regarding any subjects, do comment your question in the comment section and we will help you to answer the question. Thank you everyone and take care. Goodbye.